Good morning, church. How are we feeling this morning? As my co-host make his way, the King Theo. Now y'all can y'all should get him to sing. He don't just sing, he sang. Come on, Theo. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, he sang. Blessings and glory hey. and honor, it all belongs to you. To you. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Welcome, church. Welcome, welcome. God is great. No, nah, no, nah, we ain't going to even start there with this good stuff. My God is great. Is your God great? Is your God great? Is your God great? That's what I'm talking about. We got the great God over here. You can go back to that good God, but my God is great. God is great. all the time. And God is great. I'm telling you, they're on my side. I believe it. I believe it. Good morning again, church. My name is Morgan Simpson, hosting with you today. I also have Mr. Theo, it is such a, a blessing, a privilege, and an honor just to be back into the house of the Lord. Scripture says, I was glad when they said, let us come into the house of the Lord. So we want to welcome each and every single one of you. If this is your first time visiting, can we get a hey away? Yes, this is the 11 o'clock service, more uh, spirited towards our youth. So we don't do things as we do youthful spirits. Yeah, because I think I'm old. When I got up this morning, my back was hurt. A little bit differently, but you can kick back, you can relax, and you can enjoy with us on this Sunday morning. Yes, and so I challenge everybody to find somebody right now. I'll give y'all a little minute or two. Just shake somebody's hand and say, welcome. Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Find somebody you don't know and shake their hand. Session for our 
marriage ministry. You want to tell us a little bit about what we did? Yes. Last night we had um, about 30 couples. The marriage ministry, when we first started, less than a year ago, it was just like five couples. That, were, that was it. And we've progressively grown, and it ended up being 30 couples last night. Uh, what we did, we all got together. We sat down for dinner first, so we had dinner. Um, it was really good, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it was good. Who made and, the huh? Who made the of course I did. It was good. I do a lot of the cooking for the marriage ministry. I cook a lot. Um, so, and um, after that, we came into the congregation and we all talked amongst each other. Pastor talked to us, and then we separated men and the women. We had our little um, ladies talk, and the men had their locker room talk. And then we got together, and then we had a full panel. We had a panel with different marriages, um, how long they've been married, and we had different questions from the congregation that we needed to answer. And it was, it was, we laughed more than anything during the um, panel questions. We laughed a lot. Um, so you're, you guys are more than welcome to join us next time. Any married couples or newly married couples getting ready to get married, we're going to do an escape room next time for next month. We'll be in an escape room. We're going to rent out the whole building that, that time. Okay? All right, I just want to add one thing to it, and I think it's important because although we had the panel, we had a couple that was married 51 years, we had a couple that was married 33 years, and we had a couple that was married 28 years. So you get a big perspective of, of, of marriage. You know, it's not just we got a bunch of people been sitting up here married forever, but we also had newlyweds in the room that will be getting married next month. So it was important for them to be able to come and speak and uh, share or ask questions about some of the things that they had. So marriage is a union of two, you know, so once again, thank Pastor for allowing me and my First Lady to uh, do that and First Lady Chevelle to uh, allow us to do this, so. Thank you all. I really, really had a, a good time. I think what's really powerful about the marriage ministry, to your point, is that we have a breadth of couples that are involved, from those that have been married a long time, some that are about to get married, some that are on their second or third marriages, and it's absolutely okay to hear the experiences, to hear you know, the evolution of marriages, even through multiple marriages was really powerful. And I think one of the things that we didn't point out yesterday, we had a couple that attended last year, and they asked a question of a pan of the panel, and that question was answered and delivered from last year to this year. You want to tell us a little bit about it? You don't even tell us the question, but I'm just going to highlight, because I said, Michaela, last year you asked the question, and, and it's, it's no longer an issue, right? Good morning, church. How y'all doing today? Um, I just wanted to basically say how last year, I feel like every year, we should definitely do this every year. I appreciate the Petersons for always putting things in place for us, but last year I came and it was called marriage maintenance. And so last year when we came, I came and I asked questions. And this year I'm just living in those answer prayers because I came to that marriage maintenance and this year was a marriage retreat and it definitely was a treat so i encourage you all if you are married or going to get married to come and attend the marriage ministry um, we have a great time and men don't feel bad because we still process it definitely come. They put together lots of events. I cannot wait for the escape room. I'm really, really good at it. Um, so we want to put me on your team. Um, but I cannot wait. I just love the creativity that you guys are putting forth in um, engaging our different couples and for us to be able to be around like-minded couples instead of some of our friends that might not be as like-minded and give us some negative advice. All right, next up. Theo, you want to tell us about our mental health month? All right, all right. So thank you again. Thanks for uh, Pastor and First Lady and First Lady and Pastor, the new two, PJ, all of the pastors, all of the ministers on the rosters. Thank you all for giving us the opportunity. But uh, I stand in at 8 o'clock service and I spoke with Sister Byers. Wave your hand, Sister Byers. All the way in the back, yes. So mental health team, if you're here, can you stand up just so people can see you real quick? If you're on the mental health team. 
All right. So the reason that these people are standing up, I'll call them out so that y'all can see them because May is Mental Health Month. And so I'm challenging everybody to try to wear something green because the Mental Health Month color is green. So we will have things on the back table to the left that you can get resources if you need them. We also have the, uh, oh, it's in my hand, I'm tripping. <laughs> so we have this for families up to six people can go to the Children's Museum and spend some time with your family, take, take a load off and go around in the museum and it's right there in Sugarland. you can go. Uh, the paper has some things that they are having in the month of April, but the passes that are at the table last until October. Also on the, the TV, we going, all right, so we're gonna have a mental health walk and it's right here uh, behind the Justice Building. There's a park right there. They're gonna have a mental health walk on May the 1st. It's during the day, so if you work in the area, you can come and take your leisure to walk around for mental health. Or if you retired, you want to show up with your friends and y'all want to walk and y'all got your little team, show up and walk for mental health. Then we're going to have a Children's Mental Health Summit. It's going to be all day on a Friday, so y'all can come out on May the 4th, enjoy some information about mental health for your children. If you think that it is not happening or you don't have no need for this, I promise y'all, I traveled 855 square miles of Fort Bend County and I help children with mental health issues. I have over 200 people on my caseload, so if you think it ain't you, it could be you. And I don't want it to be you, so that's why I'm trying to give you the resources so you can get ahead of it. And the last thing that we have are different uh, events that they're gonna have throughout the month of May that Fort Bend County will put on, and those things are all on our, Fort Bend, on our Facebook page. And please see me in the back after church. I will be handing them out. I think I have about six more passes to give out. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. You know, one of the things that Pastor um, highlights and that I absolutely love about Pilgrim Journey is that we are considerate of your full body, your full experience. So not just your spiritual self, but also your mental health. Um, we have things like our exercise classes that are for your physical health. We are concerned about your relationships, hence the marriage ministry. And then when I come to our youth, we have very similar concerns, right? And I say concerns meaning we care. Um, so not only about our youth involvement in ministries, but we also care about what you're doing in school. So yesterday, I believe, was the deadline for report card submission, but I'm going to let you, if you have not submitted your report cards, for the third grading cycle, if you're on the nine week schedule or the fourth grading cycle, if you're on the six week schedule to submit those by today so that we can honor you in your academic health. Additionally, very soon we will be announcing um, our graduates. So we have opportunities for scholarships. So we will, be um, we will be announcing what's necessary from those that are graduating from um, college or from high school this spring. And then the last thing I want to mention for our youth is that um, last month we did Sunday brunch for the youth to raise money and we really, really appreciated you all's participation. One thing we did know was that not everybody put in pre-orders and so the eight o'clock they swarmed in, they had their pre-orders and then they had people buying at the door. This. So this next coming Sunday, upcoming Sunday, we will be having Seafood Sunday. And that is going to be crawfish, shrimp baskets, and by popular demand from the eight o'clock, we're adding fish baskets to it. <laughs> there goes one right there. Um, and so what we're going to ask you to do is to submit your pre-orders ASAP so that we can plan accordingly. We cannot freeze crawfish, so we will not buy in abundance. So please get your orders in ASAP. And for those of you that, you know, like a little extra uh, razzle-dazzle on your orders, we're not only going to have crawfish, corn, and potatoes, but we'll also have turkey necks and we'll also have sausage. So um, if you can get your orders in online, you can do so using the QR code. I will also be outside after service to collect orders manually for those that, 
you know, either a challenge with the QR codes, or maybe have a little challenge with math. I'm gonna need some of my youth back there doing some quick math for me to add things up. But please, please, please support our youth. Thank you. Deacon Willis. Good morning, church. Good morning. I arrived uh, in support of the uh, men's ministry here, Pilgrim Journey. On May 17th, at 6 o'clock, we're going to have a men's night out. This is uh, another time that we can uh, uh, talk amongst men. Uh, it will be uh, barbecue. Uh, just the men. Need them babies at home. Amen. Amen. Ladies, okay. Uh, it's a chance. Uh, we have game, fun and games, uh, dominoes, cards, whatever. And uh, Pastor has an opportunity to swap flies and tell lies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can get in touch with me, Deacon Willis, or Deacon Sam Golden, or Deacon Willis III, uh, and, let, and give us your number. If you, we sent out a uh, text this morning. If you didn't get one, man, you need to get with us so we can put you on the roster and make sure that you will be informed on all of the great things the men are doing here at Pilgrim Journey. Thank you. Thank you. Six ten. Oh yeah. Pastor say he has permission slips for those men <laughs> who may need a permission slip. Pastor. <laughs> Thank you. So now we're gonna have our scripture from. Mr. Mark. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Mark, it's your birthday? Yeah, you want me to sing birthday too? You heard me singing earlier, right? I got it, I got it, right y'all? Look, I'ma sing happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy I thought it was me singing this. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I told y'all I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. But happy birthday, y'all. Yes. We're going to put you in the base section. Praise God, church. How y'all doing this morning? Coming scripture reading from John chapter 16, verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Scripture reading once again from John 16, verse 33. Amen. Amen. We got another birthday over here. I don't know, Michaela, is it your birthday? It's your day to shine, though. You, she going to give us a prayer. Good morning, church. I would love for you all to join me in prayer, if you don't mind bowing your heads. Lord, we just come to say thank you. We stand in awe of you for all the many things that you continue to do for us, day in and day out, God. We stand here giving you glory, God. We thank you that you're omnipresent. We thank you that you're omnip omnipotent, Lord God. We thank you that you're Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you that you keep loving us. We thank you that you chose us to be your kids, God. And you're such an amazing father. We just come today and we pray that whatever Pastor Marcus has in his sermon for us will fill us up until we overflow into your people, Lord God. We pray that we can bring them to you, God. Allow them to see that as long as we seek your face, that you will bless us abundantly. God, we're so grateful that we're living in answered prayers, Lord God. We thank you that we're seeing these things come into fruition right in front of our eyes, Lord God. And we just want to give you all the glory and honor for that. Because you're a great God. You're faithful. You're just God. 
and we're so, so thankful. God, we thank you, Lord, for the marriage ministry, that 30 couples were able to come out and celebrate what you have created. You said he who finds a wife finds a good thing, Lord God, and we're so, so grateful that you're out here allowing men to find their good things. We honor you, oh God. We praise you, oh God. And we pray, Lord, that you allow your spirit to permeate everyone's week, Lord God. We thank you that we're clothed in our right mind, Lord God. As the mental health team brings awareness to mental health, Lord God, I pray that you will place it on someone's heart to go and check on someone's mental. We thank you, Jesus. We just thank you so, so much for loving us. Despite when we fall short of your glory, Lord God, you continue to have favor over us, Lord God, and we're so thankful for that. So today, I pray that you will allow your will to be done in our lives, Lord God. We love you so, so much. We thank you that you're a man of your word. You never fail us, Lord God. And we're so thankful. We love you, God. We stand in awe of you. You're a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. We're so, so thankful today. All these things we ask in our daughters. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. feel blessed because God could have gave up on you but he did if you're in this house today you blessed you woke up this morning you can breathe you got feet to walk in on Yes, 
So, so listen, the song says, and I'm going to put the words on the screen, it says simply this, it's a song of surrender. The song says, I give myself away so you can use me, Lord. I give myself away so you can use me. Um, as they begin to sing the song, I want you all to come from all over this place and come and gather around and about the altar. And when you get here, I want you to start singing the song. Now, once you start singing the song and you start giving yourself away, I want you to lift your hands at the altar. Once you get to the altar, Lift your hands at the altar and let God know that I give myself to you, God. I want you to let God know that you recognize that your life is not your own. And to you, God, we belong. As they're singing, won't you all come all over this place? Come on, come on, come on. People of God, the children of God are coming to come to stand. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Press forward, press forward, press forward. The people of God are coming down all over this building. Come on, so you can use me, God. My God. Come on, press forward. Come on, push forward, push forward a little more. Come on, come on, come on. All over this building. Come on, y'all come on. Y'all come on. Y'all come on. Come on, come on, come on, all over the building. 
The people got to come in. All right, all right. Come on, press forward a little bit, but press forward. Trey, press forward a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. All over the building. People got to come in. Come on. Come on, come on. Here we go. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands all over this building. Come on, sing it. Yeah. Children, come on. I give myself away. I give myself away. So children, I give myself
for us. Our lives are for the glory of you, God. So this morning we come just to give ourselves totally and freely unto you, God. We, we say to you, God, this morning, have your way in our lives. Let your will be done in our lives. God, whatever you have for us, show us. submit ourselves humbly to you as we give ourselves humbly to you we confess God we, we've been bad children we've done things we shouldn't have done as a matter of fact we did exactly what you told us not to do God and so God we humbly come and ask you to forgive us our sins God we know as bad children but whatever you do God hold us with one hand whoop us with the other but whatever you do God don't, don't let us go keep us God Keep us your children. And then, God, we ask those blessings on those that are sick and shit and those that would be here but could not be here. We ask that you continue to bless us, but bless us indeed. Keep us, God, in perfect peace. Bless our homes, our going in, our families, our children, our grandchildren, our finances. Bless us, God, to be the people of God that you would have us to be. God, we confess right now that we need you, God. We, you've been better to us than we could have ever been to ourselves. And so for that, God, I just want to stop real quick to say thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, God. You've allowed our years to roll on just a little bit farther. God, how we bless your holy name. Sweet hour. Sweet hour of prayer. You should be able to smell the sweet aroma of the sweet hour of prayer. So God, we come to you like little children with our broken hearts. We come like little children with our broken toys and we simply say, fix it, Jesus, fix it. Like only you can. Touch God, move, be with us, God, every step of the way. We need you every second, every minute, every hour of every day. We cannot do without you, God. And so, so we confess our love to you. We confess our need of you. And so, God, we are, we're, we're grateful in advance for all that you're going to do in our lives. But we're thankful for how you've kept us thus far. So, God, whatever you will, have your way in our lives. Bless us. But bless us indeed. And then, God, this is our fervent prayer. God... Wherever you are, there we shall be also. Grant us that petition. Whatever you have for our lives, bless us, keep us, love us as only you can. And now my Pilgrim Journey family, lift up your heads. Lift up your heads all over this place. Come on, give God some praise. Give God some glory. Don't pity Pat. Come on, praise God. Can you tell him thank you? Thank you. Thank you, God. Amen and amen.
praise team another hand um, just grateful for them and uh, their work their growth the progression and I also need one of them shirts though but I mean, that's another conversation but just grateful for them and grateful for you all today amen amen this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it be glad the scripture today is coming from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I can tell y'all it's good to be back in the house this week after traveling last weekend. Good to see all your faces. It's truly a blessing. John chapter 15, verse, verses 1 through 8. And I'm going to read from the NIV version this morning. The scripture reads, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. All right. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Yes. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and in my words, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Ask right now, Lord, that you decrease me and increase you, Father. Yes. Touch everyone under the sound of my voice, Lord. Open in their minds and their hearts to receive all that you have for them, Father God. Have your way, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, um... Over the last few years or so, there's been this trend where you see athletes, uh, they start 
podcasts, and it's from various sports. You see it in basketball, you see baseball, football, all these different sports and people from various backgrounds starting podcasts talking about their stories. One thing that uh, is a common theme that I notice, doesn't matter what sport it is, is that you see these veterans talking about their experiences. And one thing about their experience that they can all speak to is that as they begin to transition from having this role where they played all the time or they were always considered as a part of the game plan, as they begin to shift away from that to I'm leaving the game, they had this opportunity to be that veteran that talked, that veteran that, that led the rookies and the younger guys and taught them how to be a pro. Yeah. And so they had to make this choice, will I be of value as a veteran or will I be upset because I, the light is no longer on me? All right. Will I be frustrated? Will that be an issue? Will I not take advantage of the opportunity, opportunity given to me? And so it, it's funny because you, you hear guys talk about the owners and the, the GMs bringing them in. Hey, we know you're at this point in your career, but this is what we're looking for from yeah. you. You've shown up time and time again, and you've done things right, and we need you to teach the younger guys how to do that. And you'll get some opportunity, and when you do, you, we know that we can trust you to make the most of it. But then there's the guys who begin to tell their stories. They were like, man, I had that same talk, but I just couldn't get over the fact that this dude was coming in and he was taking my position. That I, was, that I had a little bit left in the tank and, and, and I was just so focused on being the man that I didn't realize how much value that I was going to give in this role. And the funny thing is you see guys that last for years. They, never, they may never touch the court. They may never touch the field but they'd stay on that sideline because they taught the ones below them. They were bearing fruit. They were bearing fruit. They were there, they remained, and they set their pride aside and say, I'm gonna be of use to you, I'm gonna be of value for you, I'm gonna take on this assignment. And so in this scripture, that's what uh, Christ is talking about to us, about bearing fruit. And so I wanna speak to you all today about a fruitful responsibility. In verses 1 through 2, is, uh, Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. God is the gardener. Jesus is the vine. He says that God does two things as the gardener. He cuts off and he prunes. He cuts off and he prunes. And not does he just prune because you're fruitful. He prunes so that you can be more fruitful. So that it tells us that being fruitful is significant to God. I'm going to cut you off if you're not doing my work. And if you are doing my work, I'm going to work on you. I'm going to get rid of the things that don't mean anything. I'm going to get rid of the things that are unnecessary. It's significant that we bear fruit. It's important. The first directive that, Gen that God gave us in Genesis chapter 1, he told us to be fruitful and multiply. Yeah. The first command to be fruitful and to multiply. To fill the earth and subdue it. That tells us that the first thing to be like me, to go out to reflect my character, to, to, to show others. If you look at verse 16, it's funny. He says, I you did not choose me, but I chose you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. So what is being fruitful, Mark? It's being fruitful. In, in Galatians, we learn it says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, is joy, is peace, is forbearance. It's kindness, it's goodness, it's faithfulness, it's gentleness, it's self-control. The fruit of the Spirit. These are the things that he wants us to exhibit. That's why it's so significant. He says, go and be fruitful and multiply. Be more like me, but then multiply that. Be good, be loving, be caring. Have self-control. Be gentle with one another and teach others to be the same. This is the, God is saying this in the beginning because it's that important because that's what he wants reflected in the world. 
So just imagine what the enemy is looking to do. Be hateful. Don't have any purpose. Don't have any self-control. See, when you think about the characteristics of it, it's really revealing that these are the things that are of the Lord and what he wants and these other things of, of Satan and what he wants. That's why it's so significant. He gives you the choice. I chose you to do this. Yeah. My God, God, you chose me? You selected me, handpicked, and now you've given me the capacity to do so? So then it becomes our responsibility. And so it's important to him, and he says that he chose us, and now we know what it is to be fruitful. And so not producing fruit, it means that God is uh, unable to reproduce his character in us or that we put being Christ-like to the side and we're not willing to serve others. I don't know about y'all, but that's just not what I'm about. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't show up here every Sunday if I wasn't looking to be Christ-like. I wouldn't be showing up here every Sunday if I wasn't looking to serve others. Yeah. And, and the funny thing about it is the more that you serve others, you're going to get encouraged to serve them in a better way. So what does that take? That takes some research. That takes some work. And it makes me, it, it, it gives you the ability to serve in a greater capacity. It, it fortifies you and gives you that much more to give to others. So then that's called being more fruitful. But see, that work and that process of what we're going to talk about today because it's that cutting off, it's that pruning, that cleaning, that, that part that, that gets tough for us. You see, he cuts off because he's observing enough to say, you are not serving your purpose. You are not serving me, so I got to get rid of you. I don't want God getting rid of me. I don't know about you, but I need God to hold on to me. Pastor, just pray that, Father, you could whip me with this hand, but please... As long as you're whipping me, hold on with the other. Do not let me go. I'm willing to take a whooping, but I'm not willing for you to let me go. All right. And so what does prune mean? Prune means to clean or to remove what's unnecessary. There's some trimming that has to happen. There's some cutting back that has to happen. And so in there, we also learn that there's two types of branches. There's the branches that bear fruit and the branches that don't. The branches that bear fruit and the branches that don't. He's, the scripture says they get cut off, they wither away, and they get thrown into the fire. Why? Because dead branches expose bark. And what that does, it makes room for infection. It makes room for pests. And when those get into you, those pests, they start to get into the tree and they create this disease. And before you know it, one branch is dried up, shriveling up, and the disease and the pests make their way to another branch and it gets infested. And so now branches continuously fall over. And the funny thing about it is you have a dead tree standing there in front of you looking alive. You see, some of us, we get so caught up in sin and we just standing here dead, not realizing that we're not alive. We have no room for Christ in us anymore because the pest and disease has taken over. That's what sin does. The virus begins to attack the cells and now it kills off cell by cell until it has rule over the body and there's nothing more to give to Christ. And, with that, and what God says is since you're a dead branch, I'm not about to watch my tree stand up there with no spirit, with no life. So I'm going to get rid of the branch in order to save the tree. I'm going to get rid of the branch in order to save the tree. You have to cut it off. You see, the vine, it provides the nutrients. The vine, it provides the minerals. The, the vine provides the water to the branch. Jesus provides the minerals. Jesus provides the nutrients. Jesus provides the water to the branch. You see, that's why he says you have to remain in me. You have to abide in me because if you do so, then I can provide you what you need to sustain. When I talk about love, when I talk about self-control, when I talk about perseverance, when I talk about goodness, if you're wondering if you don't have the capacity, it's because you're not abiding in me. You see, the, the, the most beautiful thing that I realized in reading the scripture, he says, if you abide in me, I abide in you. Whew. My God, can you imagine submitting yourself to him and without even understanding, he's already submitted himself to you. All right. 
All you have to do is come. All you have to do is spend the time. All you have to do is submit and give yourself to me. And he's already there. He's already present. You see, I know y'all know because once you start to walk this thing out and live this life, those attacks start coming. Here comes the devil. The devil wasn't even worried about you before, but now that you're starting to walk down this path, he knows Jesus is abiding now. So the devil is trying to disrupt that. But if he's abiding in you, what you notice is those things is when the enemy comes with those attacks, they look a little different now. Your, your, your response is a little slower now. Your emotions don't get as high because Jesus is in the building. And when Jesus is in the building, he doesn't have the room for Satan. Yeah. Satan can't overcome when he's in the building. So he says, abide in me and therefore I will abide in you. What is of the world is not meant to flow back into the vine. It, what is in the vine is meant to flow through us out into the world. Yeah. You see, so we stay in him so those things that he's looking for us to reflect, we can continue to give them to others. If you go looking for them in the world, the love, the kindness, those things only come most of the time because of what you possess. Those things only come to you because of who you are. But see, Jesus loves you anyway. He loves you when you're up and when you're down. He loves you when, when, when you got the notoriety and you don't. So those things are already there for you to give even when you're at your lowest. Have you ever been there? You doing bad yourself and somebody coming to you with their problems. And yet you can find it within you to give to someone else, to console someone else, to love someone else. I've never felt lower and yet here I am given to you. That's because Jesus is abiding. That's yeah. because that love, that time, that care, it comes from him. Yeah. That's not you. And that's why the world will hate you. We'll get into that next week because Jesus gives you the capacity to do that. They hate that about you. How can we stand in this same place and you still have a smile on your face? All right. All right. How can your father not be in your house and you still feel good about you? Yeah. They're going to hate you for that, but they're not really hating you. They're hating him. Yeah. And so we have the fruit that are the, the branch or the non-bearing branches that get cut off. And then we have the fruitful branches, the fruitful branches. In the uh, second half of verse two, he says, while every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even much uh, even more fruitful. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. God is going to clean you. You see, the, the, the pruning is the cutting of the unnecessary. It's the cutting back so that you can grow to be more dense. You produce that much more flowers or leaves or fruit. It's dense. It's not one leaf here, one fruit there, but it's all packed together. And, and so you have to, there's a process in order to grow in that way that you have to, that you're pruned or that's why you're cut back. But the thing about being cut back is that cleaning isn't easy. The cleaning isn't easy. When you have to let go of those things, that's why we have to have him in us in order that, that he starts to make, hey, I'm, he's shaking things up. Jesus is in the building now, so that has to go. I'm taking you to this place, so that has to go. If we go back and we look at the fruit, and Second Peter says, for this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, into goodness, knowledge, into knowledge, self-control, perseverance, godliness, mutual affection, and love. And it says, if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Godliness, mutual affection, perseverance, love, self-control, but they're going to keep you from being ineffective and unproductive. It takes some work to get to being fruitful. It takes some work to be clean. That's when the pruning is going on, it's going to be tough. It's not an easy thing. But we have to submit ourselves unto it so the Lord can have his way. In verses uh, 4 through 5, the scripture says... Let me think about this. Before I go there, I'll say, though, though the love, the godliness, the perseverance, the self-control, 
those things come to us as we seek to be more like him. As we seek to be more like him at work. As we seek to be more like him within our families. As we seek to be more like him in our relationships. As we seek to be more like him in our service to others. Those things begin to come to us. That godliness, that love, the self-control. Because we're looking for that. Our intention has changed because we seek to be more like him. But the process of looking like more, the process of becoming more, that's the pruning. We long for it, we desire it, but we have to go through the cleaning, y'all. And so in verses uh, four through five, it says, remain in me as I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I was watching this story about Kobe Bryant. He was saying that when he was about 10 or 11 years old, he scored one point in basketball for that summer. He played summer basketball, 10 or 11 years old, one basket. Man, I'd have been driving him upset. I said, we've been going three weeks and you hadn't did nothing. He said he was frustrated. He didn't like it. It, 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 was, it was rough on him, but he said it. He said, man, I just suck. You know Kobe pretty blunt. And he said over those next few years, uh, as beginning around the age of 12, that he made, it, made up in his mind that that was not going to be the end story for him. And so he said he would spend two to three hours a day in the gym. Two to three hours a day, every day, getting into that gym, working. And he said by the time that he was 14, he was the best player in the state. From 10 years old, one bucket. 14 years old, best player in the state. Kobe went through the pruning. You see, those two or three hours was time abiding. Those two or three hours were time away from the ineffective. You see, that's the thing that we have to realize. We have to go abide in him. And we just don't start looking for results, but go put in the time. Put your head down and do the work. I said two or three years later. I said one basket in the summertime. That's low, y'all. That's a lowly feeling. But then to turn around and commit to the process, to commit to the pruning, to, su to submit to uh, seeking the Lord's godly ways, turned into him being the number one player in the state. You see, if you submit your time in the Lord, seeking his will, doing the work, you'll start showing up as God's number one player in your family. You'll start showing up as God's number one player at your job. You'll start showing up as God's number one player in your relationship. Right now, you're looking to be the number one player, but you're not looking to do the abiding. You're not looking to submit yourself unto his will. And what it means is we have to start taking time away from the ineffective time away from the things that aren't of his will. God says, I'm cutting the things off that are unnecessary. And, and it's funny because as you start to spend more time in the Lord, as you start to spend more time in his will and doing the things that he's called for for you, Marcus, you're going to have every evening to watch TV and do that. No, you got to sit your behind down and be in the word. Why do you have to be in the word? Because you got to show up Sunday for the Lord. Is you have to show up Sunday for his people. So you have to spend time abiding. So sometimes instead of just going home, you may have to come to the church. Well, why you got to come to the church? Just to make sure the children are okay. Just to be in their presence and for them to know that you're here. That's abiding, y'all. That's what God is looking for. He's looking for us to show up. Sometimes, sometimes he'll bring the scripture to life in your face. He'll bring circumstances to you, but you have to show up first. You have to be in the building, in the place that he's called for. And what that does, it takes time away from the ineffective. Hey, man, we headed out tonight. We going to, no, I ain't got time. Hey, man, we going to, no, I ain't got time. Because there's something in the future that God has already set scheduled for me. You see, I know every Sunday is coming. God got something in everyone's uh, life that's under the sound of my voice right now. He has something coming. But are you in position for what's coming? Are you in position for what's scheduled? Are you doing the pruning and the work to be prepared for what God has said before you? 
you have to submit yourself to you. You see, if you don't think that you uh, have it in you, it's because you're not in him. If you don't think that you, if you think that you don't have it in you, it's because you're not in him. Yeah. It's because you're not in him. He says, if, I, if you abide in me, I abide in you. And so if, when, if, if Jesus is in you, doubt has to move out of the way. If Jesus is in you, fear has to move out of the way. If Jesus is in you, the anger has to be suppressed. If Jesus is in you, the pride goes out of the window. You're so... If you don't think that you have it in you, it's because you're not in him. Because when he's in you, those obstacles become opportunities. When he's in you, the thing that you thought was uh, there to stop you only becomes another opportunity for God to show you how good he is. You see, we, he changes our perspective and we lead a, a totally different life when he begins to abide in us. You see, that's the thing that we, have to, that we have to seek, that we have to yearn for, is that I'm living my life normally, but things are starting to happen in, in my experiences because now Jesus is in me. And, and, and used to when I looked at this, this tough situation or when I went through these things or experienced these things with these people, I was down on myself. I was beaten up. I was downtrodden. I didn't think that I was going to get through, and I counted myself out, and I didn't give myself a chance. But now with him abiding in me, I look forward to seeing how I show up today. I look forward to seeing what God does to use me today. I look forward that even not in my best that someone is going to come to me and say, thank you. No, thank you for what? Thank you for just showing up and being you. Because God used you the other day when I was down and out. And the only reason I'm here is because you showed up the other day. That's what abiding looks like, y'all. Even in your lowest, God will use that to show you his goodness. Even at your lowest, when you've counted yourself out, God is going to do something to show you that he still has a hold of your hand. Kobe said becoming fundamentally sound was, was essential to his growth. Fundamentally sound. And that's what we have to be as Christians. It's fundamentally sound. Pray, be in the word, fast, show up to church. Be willing to serve. Be loving. Have some self-control. It's just fundamentally sound. It's just the little things. He says just abide in me. That's it, and I'm going to be in you. You think you're doing the work. You say, God does the pruning. You see, when he's in you and you're being fruitful, Jesus is in there working too. There's some things that's falling off. You know, some leaves just fall off those bright branches to make, new, uh, make room for more leaves. That's because something on the inside is saying, you got to go to make room for what God is doing. You have to show up. You just have to be fundamentally sound. He say, just pick up the word. He say, before you get on social media, just give me a moment. Read the scripture of the day. That's it. Just read the scripture of the day. Just put the Bible app on your phone, and he's going to give you a scripture daily. And then that scripture of the day is going to turn into the few verses around it. Because with Jesus being in me, I'm starting to get hungry for a little bit more. And I want to know, I just want some relationship. There's this thing happening in my life, and I'm trying to understand why that's going on. And so the scripture of the day is not enough anymore. And, and you know what? Along with that scripture, I'm praying. And maybe I prayed during the middle of the day, but now I want to pray to start my day. Or maybe I prayed at the start, and now I need to pray in the middle. And sometimes it's not even the praying. It's just talking to him as you go throughout. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, look at you. That's all that it takes. And then the abiding begins. You see, the same way that those dead cells or those diseases and pests come in and ruin the tree, when Jesus gets into place, I said things have to move out of the way because he starts to mold you into his will. And as long as you're willing to show up and, and, and bear the fruit of the spirit, there's something that that tree has to be doing. There's some things on the inside working that's forcing the fruit to come up, that's forcing the fruit to grow, and it's going to force out the things that are not of him. But you have to be fundamentally sound. You have to show up and do that. You say, oh, am I, uh, well, I'm not even going to go into my beep all days, but Kobe, his fruit lives on today. His fruit continues to live on today by the work that he did, by the way that he submitted himself. He set the stage and others began to uh, 
incorporate those habits into their professional careers. Jesus, his fruit lives on today. More people are incorporating his will but we just have to be willing to do the same. It's on us to carry that now. It's on us to be the disciples. He says that that, that is his father's glory. That is his father's glory. It's not just showing up. It's not just uh, uh, being here, coming in and walking out, but it, it's those things that love, that temp, that goodness, slowing down to speak to somebody and really looking them in the eyes and hearing what they have to say. It's the, just the patience in the day. Uh, Bill Cosby, it was, it, it, when you talk about abiding, he, there's this uh, episode of the, of the Cosby show where they're washing dishes. And I guess they just, I can't even remember if it was a family dinner or whatnot they just had. They're in there washing dishes, cleaning up. And Claire looks at him and she said, oh, I'm done. I'm going to bed. And he looking sick because y'all never remember how he used to do. He tear up the kitchen when he cooked. And so he in there just working on this stuff, like, oh, man, you going upstairs. But he say, well, can I just, can I just, uh, you know, I put the water in it, and you know it starts to, the soap, and it does the little work overnight, and the bubbles, and they make, they loosen up to me. So when I come down in the morning, it's all ready for me to wash it. And she said, she's just looking at him like, you better wash that dish because you, you, when you get up, you better wash it because I'm not going to get down here, then I have to do it myself. And, but see, the thing was, it's funny because he knew a thing. He knew that if he sat up there and he was just showing up religiously, scraping at the pan, that some of the stuff would come off, but it was going to take a lot more work. And that it may just be empty calories that he wasn't getting anything done. He was just working at the pan, just showing up, just scrubbing. But he knew that if he got, if he allowed it to soak overnight, that it was soaking, those particles would have their way because it was abiding in the soap, that the pan was abiding in the soap. And those things that weren't really supposed to be there overnight, they would be loosened and the soap would remove it away. You see, it's a difference when you abide in that thing because those things that are not of him have to work themselves away or those things are being worked away by God. He will do the pruning. But if you're fighting that thing in religion, just showing up, empty expectations without giving of yourself, you'll be fighting all day. But if you come and you abide, you soak in the spirit and, and you allow yourself to exist in the spirit, to be of the spirit, to seek his will, to seek the word, to be in prayer, to share the good news of the Lord with strangers and people that you come across. The abiding is what's going to change you. The abiding is going to do the work on you that you fear of doing on yourself. The abiding is what changes us. As I get ready to close, if we look at verses 7 and 8, it says, If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit. If you remain, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Abide, ask, receive. Abide, ask, receive. If you abide in me, if you are of my will, then when you ask, you will receive. Not only will you receive, but it will be for God's glory. If, Some of y'all sitting here thinking like, ah, oh, he's saying that, but it ain't that easy. It ain't just that. I, I've been begging and pleading, asking God for that. I said, abide? You're talking about what he hadn't done, but abiding means that you did something first. Yeah. And see, the, the thing about abiding that's beautiful is that when you abide, when you get right here to asking, the ask begins to change. You see, the abiding changes the ask because the ask shifts from your glory to his glory. When the ass becomes his glory, you don't despise the humble beginnings. When the ass becomes to his glory, you realize, even when I didn't realize or even when I was being pruned, I was already in the blessing. 
You see, the ask, the, the abiding changes the ask. And what we realize is that even when we're living our dreams, there's undesirables. There's things that we have to go through in the process of building and, and walking in God's will. Everything is not going to feel good. But you can be in the blessing and not be in the best place. You could be in the blessing and not feel good about everything. But don't forget that that is still a part of God's will. Abide, ask, and then receive. And then it's for his glory. You see, if you look back at those times and if you start to study and humble yourself about where you are right now, you'll begin to see that what I'm going through and what I've been through was for his glory. What I went through, it wasn't for me. It was about the Father. And they, even the thing that I asked for, I was in it. And I was just, it was just the process where I lost track that I was in God's will. It was a part of the process and what he was molding me to become that I should have been grateful for, but I lost that because I wasn't willing to bear the responsibility of the pruning. There's a responsibility in being fruitful, y'all. That there is, there is a responsibility when he talks about goodness, when he talks about self-control, when he talks about perseverance, these are things that you just don't pick up and run off with. These are things that are developed. These are seeds that, that, blossom, that bloom, that grow, that bloom and blossom into fruit. But you have to be willing to go through the process. You have to be willing to be responsible for the process of being fruitful. That's all I have, y'all. Amen. Amen. Uh, so now we come to the point that uh, some of us in here right now, we're looking for more. We have a desire for more. We want to be more fruitful. But that begins with the abiding. That begins with the relationship. That begins with knowing our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so right now, uh, we have a twofold invitation. And the first is for anyone that, will, that wants to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of their life. You have the opportunity to come down right now. And then the second is for anyone in this area, for anyone under the sound of my voice that does not have a church home, Pilgrim Journey welcomes you to come down and to be a part of our family. Uh, Pastor Simpson, First Lady Simpson, myself, First Lady Monica would love nothing more to, but to be of service to you and your family. The, door, the doors of the church are now open. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. Give with a grateful heart, give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am for what the Lord my God has done for us. And now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done. With a grateful heart, give 
PJ family, we have come in to join us today, um, brother and sister Robert Willis III, he and his family, and we also have Andre and Natasha Richardson coming to join our family today. Amen, amen. Would you like to have a word? Speaking of the fruit, um, I've been eating, been eating, been eating, and um, I've learned a lot. Um, you know, follow, got some learning from from some good people on the way. Um, and God has has put me on, on a journey, and He brought me back to the journey. <laughs> um, I was a uh, I was a member here twenty two years ago. About 22 years ago, and I'm glad to be back. Amen. 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 We're glad to have you as well. Um, if y'all don't know, this is uh, Deacon Willis's son, um, and the, his girls down on the end, they already are a blessing as well. So we're just grateful to have you all as a family, and glad that you decided to come back. Um, on behalf of Pastor Simpson, First Lady Simpson, of Pilgrim's Journey, we'd like to extend you all the right hand of fellowship, welcome you all to be a part of the family. We're excited to have you, to serve you as you work out your soul salvation. Amen? Amen. 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 Um, I don't, word. I'm, I'm just thankful that we have a place to call home and to serve together as a family. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Truly a blessing. That is a blessing. I think that's how a lot of us, well, I know that's how we feel as fathers, as parents, to call home and to serve with our children. So on behalf of Pastor Simpson, First Lady Simpson Pilgrim Journey, we'd like to extend you the right hand of fellowship, welcome you all to be a part of Pilgrim Journey family, and just say thank you and say that we are here to serve with you as you work out your soul salvation. Amen? Amen. Do you have a word? All right, you all can go with Sister Gardner and she'll uh, speak to you about new member orientation. Amen, amen. Y'all give them a hand. God is so good. He is truly moving. Truly, truly moving. At this time, we would like to acknowledge our 
uh, first time visitors. If we have any first time visitors, would you please stand? Any first time visitors, would you please stand? Amen. And so we would like to know your name, your church home, and how you came to be with us today. Uh, good morning. Uh, we are the Monroes, uh, Caden's godparents, and he got us here this morning. Uh, we normally go to Lily Grove, but we glad we found y'all this morning through Caden here. So, Amen. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Your presence is not taken for granted, and so we just say thank you for being here, and we enjoy having them, and we love working with them. We look forward to seeing you, continue seeing you all as well. Amen. Amen. First time, let me get over here. Amen. We'd like to know your name, church home, and how you came to be with us today. My name is Shelby. Um, I met Miss Cheryl and Mr. Milton, uh, <laughs> and uh, we shared the gospel together, and uh, they invited me to their church, and I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Amen. Well, we thank you. It's a blessing to have you today. Um, I see a few faces that didn't stand up. I'm not going to call them all out. But, you know, when you have family, friends that come from hours away, I you know, just want to say thank you. Miss um, uh, Paula and her daughter, they actually uh, just family. That's all I can say. For years when I played AAU basketball and all those things, and we did fundraising, she would always come with my mom to support. When I went to, off to play football in college, I'd come out of the – thing at the stadium and looking I'm looking for my mom and I might see Miss Paula before I saw her sometime so it's a blessing to have y'all thank y'all for coming amen 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 it's been a blessed day y'all a tremendously blessed day so right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give the benediction and then you'll be under the command of the ushers for offering will that work for y'all give the benediction and then uh, everyone, the, the ushers will come forth, give the command so that you can come around. Father God, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you have done on this day, Lord. Thank you for choosing us. Thank you for your fruit, Father God. Thank you for choosing us to bear fruit, Father God. We thank you for the pruning and that process that you have begun in our lives, Father God. We ask that you just continue to work on us and, and uh, touch us, use us in a way that, we, that is beyond our imagination, Father God. Do what only you can. Father, we also ask that as we depart today, you give us traveling grace and you continue to bless us, cover us, and keep us throughout this week, Father. And now may the unmerited grace of God, the unconditional love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let everyone say all together, Amen. Uh, us, you got to earn it. <laughs>